You know, after year one of the Luca Trey trade, people were deeming it one of the worst draft day trades of all time. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Bill Simmons. But no, that you know, that was kind of the consensus. Like, oh man, Atlanta really messed up if you recall the rough start that Trey Young had to his career. And now in 2021, it looks way closer than people I think thought it would be. Right? I mean, they're they're both offensive juggernauts who you have to hide defensively. Both of them are having to mature as leaders. And, you know, look, overall, I think you still have to give the edge to Luca simply because of his size, right? Like it's it's harder to take the ball out of his hands. It's going to be harder to trap him. And we all know when it comes playoff time, like size does matter. And little guards tend to struggle when the physicality is picked up. Now, we haven't seen Trey in the playoffs yet, right? But, you know, the size, the long-term durability. But as far as skill for skill and impact, they're pretty damn close. And, you know, I will say this, as small as Trey is, I do, I do think that he's built pretty solid. I think that he he appears to be durable. He, you know, he falls well and he, he protects himself pretty dang well, right? So I say all that to get into the lead-in. The two met last night on ESPN, the early game, the Hawks and the Mavericks. Both teams, I think, kind of underwhelming so far this season, right? Both teams with playoff aspirations and they're not where they need to be. And they've both been hit with injuries and in, in, in COVID as well. Before we touch on the game and what happened, though, we can talk about, you know, Luca Trey, who you want. And I, I get it. Like most people are going to lean Luca. I understand that. But I do think there are some people that that would make the argument for Trey Young. And I'm not mad at that either. I think the more interesting question right now would be who has done a better job building around these two young stars, Atlanta or Dallas? Let me run off some of the young players here. So Atlanta, you got Cam Reddish. DeAndre Hunter, both came in that draft. One of those picks, I think, came from the, the trade. No, I don't know. They did a lot of wheeling and dealing. You got Kevin Herter. They bring in Clint Capella, John Collins. And then we know, I'm not going to add the veteran guys that are there kind of, you know, short term perhaps, right? And then for Dallas, obviously, you bring in Porzingis to be Lucas' sidekick. Josh Richardson instead of Seth Curry. That hasn't gone well, right? Tim Hardaway Jr., Jalen Brunson, a second round pick. That was a great pick. I got something to say about second round picks here later in this podcast. And then Maxi Kleba. Now, I think I like Atlanta. I think I like Atlanta's core of players. Obviously, they have, they're younger. There's a little more potential room to grow with them. Um, and Dallas's guys are kind of more what they are. I think I like what they've done around Trey more than what they've built around Dallas. Granted, Atlanta had more of a clean slate, right? They had they had more assets to work with, more cap space to work with. But perception ultimately is reality with these, these NBA narratives. If Atlanta builds a powerhouse around Trey, we look back 10 years from now, it, it, this argument of Trey Luca may look a lot different. That's the reality of the situation. So this game, Atlanta, it felt like they were kind of in control of for most of it. They didn't really like blow the doors off of anything, but they just... They just had the lead for most of the game. And what you saw was John Collins was eating up Kristaps Porzingis in the pick and roll action. That's just a tough matchup for him. He's one of the quicker, more explosive forwards in the league. And we know KP is, is moving kind of stiff, man. And he's going to get a pass for a while, right? He's coming off the surgery. But it, it led to Porzingis only playing 19 minutes in the game. And he didn't finish the game. And part of that reason was Dallas got good Willie last night. They got good Willie. Pause. No, but look, man, Willie Colley Stein, you know, I, I've watched his whole career. I, I remember him at Kentucky where I thought he was going to be like a, a defensive juggernaut. That's what it appeared like his trajectory was. Watched him in Sacramento have his ups and downs. And then, of course, last year, his short stint with my dubs is where I paid even more attention to him, right? He's a very likable dude. I think he's a, he's a guy like to, it, this sounds silly, but it seems like he's one of those guys to know him is to love him. From a distance, obviously. But that being said, on the basketball court, there's not many dudes that have done less with that much talent in the league. Like Willie Cauley Stein, his physical attributes, his talent, he should be much better. He should be a much better player. You know, I hate to say this, but maybe it'll motivate him, you know? So again, I like him. He seems like a great dude, but he's just, he doesn't, he, he's just inconsistent. It doesn't seem like he loves basketball, is what it is. In fact, I think he loves football, 
But uh, that's that's a story for another time. But they got good Willie Colley Stein, and I think it's a good match for him in Dallas, playing with a guard like Luca that's going to get him stuff real easy and keep him engaged, right? So Atlanta has the lead. Second half, Tim Hardaway Jr. You know starts heat check. When he gets hot, he gets hot, right? I think we've seen that for years. So he he rattles off like three, four threes in a row, and then Jalen Brunson gets going. And they climb right back in this game, and we end up getting kind of the light show we expected this offensive uh, back and forth, right? It's so funny. There's so many similarities, and Trey and Luca are going to forever be connected. And I, I also think they have a lot of the same issues. One of them being, I think, that both teams are over-reliant on those two you know, lead guards, lead ball handlers. Luca has the ball too much. Trey has the ball too much. It's not, you know, it, it puts up gaudy numbers and it's spectacular to watch at times. But for the for the sake of actually winning and making a good team that's that's a contender, it's a little too much in my opinion. And I think it needs to be less usage. And uh, but what you saw was Brunson on ball, and I think that helped with the run that Dallas made in the second half. I mean, he, he's he's a nice, solid player, man. And then the other similarity that I think both Luca and Trey have is. They both get a little too cute when it comes to getting into their own shot at times. And more specifically with Luca, he has this snatchback move that at his size, frankly, it's unnecessary. And what I mean by snatchback, I, I didn't say step back, snatchback, he hangs the ball out like he's going to dribble and then he snatches it back into a, a three. And it looks really pretty. I I don't see, I think that is probably a good portion of why he his percentage is down from the three point line. Luca's a good shooter. It's the extra stuff he does into the shot that's unnecessary at his size. And then with Trey, what I've noticed is he likes to we we see how good he is at manipulating the defense with his eyes. But sometimes he overdoes it and he tries to do it into his own shot. Like he stares down a teammate. He's looking this way and then boom, he takes a shot where his eyes have barely a split second to lock on the target, the rim. And I get it at Trey's size. He's got to be deceptive. He does. I get it. But I think for the most part with both of those dudes, some of that stuff is just more style than substance. I think they can get their shots off. Less is more. I find myself saying that more and more when it comes to basketball. But in the end, Atlanta had a shot with about five, six seconds down a basket And Trey Young flopped on a Willie Cauley Stein screen, and it ended up in a Gallinari kind of leaning mid range contested J, a shot you don't want. And Trey, for my taste, Trey got too demonstrative towards the referees. He ran up screaming. Like, I'll I'll put it to you like this if it was Draymond or somebody like that, they'd have have probably got a a T, even though the final whistle had blown. They would have, but you know, I think for Trey, you got it's like, look, bro, you are a flop god. It, it, call it what you want. You know, you, you're getting to the line a ton. You can't complain when you flop and flail around like you do. I don't want to hear it. I'm sorry. And so Dallas ends up getting the win as they continue to try to right the ship here. I think they've won like three in a row now at home. 